and welcome to the Green Building Research Institute's course, The Economics of Green Buildings. This course will provide an overview of some of the economic issues associated with green buildings and look at how viable green building practices are from a financial standpoint. I'm Rebecca Joan Brown and I will be leading the course today. The course will highlight where the costs for green buildings come in and where projects can find savings from green interventions. We will look at specific green interventions, as well as their costs and expected return on investment, and relate this back to how effective each is from a sustainable standpoint. We will also highlight some of the most cost-effective green interventions, both from an environmental standpoint and in terms of the lead points that can be earned for the intervention. The Environmental Protection Agency defines a green building as one that maximizes the usefulness of all consumed resources while minimizing any negative impacts on both human health and the environment. We divide green building initiatives into seven basic areas, energy effectiveness, water conservation, materials, site treatment and conditions, indoor quality, waste stream management, and building emissions. Many interventions will touch on more than one of these categories. For instance, installing windows to provide daylighting will decrease the energy used for lighting and improve indoor quality, but may result in more energy being used for thermal conditioning if the windows are used are not well insulating. Energy effectiveness includes consideration of efficiency in building systems and appliances, the introduction of renewable sources of energy, and passive strategies to reduce energy needs and consumption. Water conservation covers efficiency for indoor fixtures, alternative water supplies, and water use for irrigation and other outdoor uses. The materials arena encompasses the life cycle impacts of the materials and products used for a building project, including their embodied energy and other environmental impacts. Site conditions include how a project prevents erosion of topsoil and sedimentation of nearby water bodies, how accessible the site is to multiple modes of transportation, and how the building affects its neighbors through heat islands, light pollution, and other factors. Indoor quality refers to occupant experience of the space. Daylight, thermal comfort, ventilation, air quality, and any conditions that would affect the health of occupants fall into this category. A project's waste stream is how much waste it produces and how this waste is disposed of. Provisions for recycling or other forms of waste diversion would fall into this category, as would source reduction, less waste to dispose of in the first place, and purchasing policies that specify products that are cleaner to dispose of. The project is a 95,000 square foot office that serves over 400 full-time employees. One of the most effective cost-saving measures that was employed was setting the green targets early on. The project team identified a 40% reduction in energy costs over a conventional office as a design goal and LEED Silver certification as another. By incorporating these criteria from the start, the project was able to exceed the second goal by earning LEED Gold certification. These goals were crafted from a partnership of the tenant and the developer, and the LEED rating informed the base rent cost in the lease that was crafted. 